Hello and welcome to another round of Spud Ventures. This week we are back in the Undermountain for D&D 5th Edition campaign, The Forgotten Ones. So take it away, Great Din. Hey, hi, hello. Hey, hi, and hello, everybody. I can't talk today. Um, welcome back. This is a uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage module with a bit of a twist. I am your host, uh, or you're not your host, I am your GM, Great Din. Joining us as always, we have uh, Space Jawa playing Jonk. Yes, maybe, sort of, but also no. I will have to ponder that later. We have Azure Mountain playing Lander Brightwood. Yep. Certainly we have, am. We have Digo Dragon playing Victor. The Wolf of Walmart. <laughs> we have Avis Echo playing Yuli. Arteries bring blood away from the, from the heart and veins bring it towards it. I don't know why you felt that was relevant, but I'm because terrified. Because literally my head is entirely my enemy textbook. Fight me. <laughs> oh, that's fair <laughs> the um, arteries to make them bleed out faster i mean that's that that's why you don't get in a fight with someone doing studying that anyways and finally last but not least we have newbie spud playing usk of house castle Lanter. present last when last we left our adventurers they had uh, discovered some new secrets and sort of hit a a roadblock that indicated they need to make their way back down into the undermountain uh, and they have made their way to the Sixth level, which is sort of a breaking point between the uh, various floors. Floor five technically doesn't connect anywhere else. Not without various portals and other nonsense. But there is a direct path carved by some umber hulks that leads down into what is currently level six of the Undermountain. And uh, our adventurers have just seen two of them wandering away. Because getting in fights with umber hulks is maybe not the best idea. So this what is going to be great. To fight them. I look forward, now, to, I guess. look forward to dying with you all. Hey, by the way, how much did that Revenant, how much health did that Revenant that we fought have? Oh! I'm pretty sure it was uh, in the three digits. Yeah. Hmm. Now that I think about it, we never actually did fight him, didn't we? We negotiated. No, no yeah. No, Correct. Didn't. You assisted him. And he died fighting something else for you. Yes. He's probably alive again now, though. Possibly. Well, Along did with all the people, people he that want... we killed for him. I mean, did all the people killed. he want killed get killed? Yes, uh, but they're probably alive again. Yes. Oh, that that is an excellent point. Mm hmm. Except they won't they don't won't remember the Revenant anymore. And he won't remember the either. Makes an awkward birthday party. Mm. So, I mean, I guess problem sort of solved. Yep. Mm -hmm. A problem anyway. we all can deal with later. <laughs> Let's yes. go this way. Okay, so what is it? What is what did, what did you say the, the role was to know about like monsters? Is that nature or survival or what? Uh, depends on the monster type. Yeah, it depends on the monster type. Uh, in this particular case, it would be nature. Yeah. I don't think these guys are in Mordenkind's Tome of Foes. No. Okay. Uh, all right. With a uh, 24, uh, here is what you know about Umber Hulks. Uh, they're very large. They're very mean. Uh, and they have a... Uh, they have a magical sort of uh not aura but a magical gaze uh that can make you extremely easy prey excuse me make you extremely easy prey uh they are also ambush predators and they can tunnel straight through rock oh joy yeah let's, so let's not let's not the apex predators yeah. of the underground fantastic mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I'm leaving my owl there to keep an eye on them as we go the other way. Correct. The um, specifically what you know about their their sort of magical gaze is that uh, if if you fall under its spell, you just stop being able to see the Umber Hulk. Ah. Um. So yes, <laughs> selective blindness. Pretty much. I don't feel like we're strong enough for this. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, why we're on. going 
the other well, way. That is, I mean, that is why we fight him, so he gets stronger. This no, being this entire way. floor. We are going the other way. Yeah, yeah I'm sure there will be idea. nothing dangerous in that direction. I mean, they are monsters. Yeah, we, we, are, we are supposed slow. to be killing monsters. We're okay. supposed to be killing no, monsters we're that we going, can kill. We're supposed mm -hmm. to be going deeper. <laughs> and we're supposed to be picking up you know, things that can let us get stronger so that we can kill them eventually. But right now, we don't have those things. So Hulk's moving packs, yeah? Uh, not always. Uh, okay. They, Like I said, they're ambush predators, so they, they have a lot of... Uh, th there's a lot of them that will hang out individually, but, you know, if they're... Basically, if they're making a big tunnel, then they'll work together, in Keep a sense. Keep in mind that if we die, we lose all the progress we made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we we don't currently have a safeguard against losing our memories. Not, We've got people looking yeah. into that, but we don't have those at the moment. Yeah. On the plus side, if you forget everything, you'll forget that you're not that you may not actually be who you think you are. But and that sounds like a positive to me. A lot of negatives to it too. I'd say the negatives far out, far outweigh the positives. If you want to charge into the Umper Hulks, Zhang, be my guest. Zhang, you're doing it alone, so I advise against it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if... Fighting monsters or anything, you're fighting two things alone. You might break your teeth if you bite them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going on any Why suicide there, there missions with, with you all. And there's a but junk. The rest are... of the party has already expressed that they don't want to. I yeah, mean, they're they're. <laughs> I mean, depending on how you count, we outnumber them at least two to one, three to one. But junk, all of us have stated that we don't want to, so it's just one that wants and to. And also, fight them. that's just how many we can see. They might be like cockroaches. You see one. There's thirty more inside the walls. Hmm. I mean, Junk isn't going towards them, but he does look like he's very, very. He, he, I'm not really indulging fine. you, this Junk. I'm them. also not going to be your conscience for you. Got it? No, I mean he's not. Not like he's not like he's looking. I mean, it's more, more like an internal thing. Like not like, like, like then not keep like it internal. <laughs> I'll laugh if you go start heading down that hallway. Get up here. Uh, Yuli, you rolled perception, correct? Yeah, because now I've gotten paranoid. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfectly understandable. Perfectly understandable. Uh, here is uh, what you see. One, let me get into the masking layer and open up some more of this. Whoop. You can see a doorway has been busted open and further down, and uh, these uh, these hallways are a little more roughly hewn, but they still have that same dwarven craftsmanship you've seen from previous floors. Um, it seems to be of a different uh, different century of like aesthetic, uh, and it seems to be a lit a little bit less um, classical dwarven. Um, I mean, offhand, you don't know like you know what what sort of style this is going for but it, it's sort of like seeing the different like it would sort of be like looking at a brutalist building and looking at a a, a more baroque type building and being able to go like oh yes those are clearly different um but you can also hear uh down this hallway into this sort of uh large room uh there is the sound of a fairly large thing uh, shuffling around, uh, uh, sniffing and uh, uh, like sniffing deeply and biting into sounds like rocks, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, that's that's sort of all you can get a sense of. You are fortunate in that it there does not seem to be uh, any sort of uh. Any sort of Umber Hulks down this hallway. I feel like me, the player, knows what's in there, so let's not. Again. <laughs> There's got to be some way we can, like, 
mask ourselves sense wise, right? We're we're in deep I mean nest territory. Victor's got pass without trace. Oh hey, you know, thanks for anyway. I wasn't been trying to say I'm going to cast a spell on you guys to make this easier yeah, for I, us. I figured. <laughs> yeah, we need to at the we need to mask our trail through this because if they can burrow through this, there's a very good chance we can end up like completely pincered as they burrow around us. How is the writing of Pass Without a Trace again? Is it the one where you have to be within 30? You have to be within 30 it? when I cast the spell. Okay, so say you cast it and I'm within 30 and then I go like 60. I'm still under the effects. Yes? I believe, I, yes. I, I believe that is correct. Is. Let me double check. Pass Without Trace. A veil of shadow and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity and can't be tracked except by magical means. So... I feel like it's, that sounds like I have to stay within 30, which is fair. So uh, I know there's kind of I know more. there's two spells I'm literally thinking about, and they say two different things, and I I'm, always mistake them. I'm willing to say that it's 30 feet. Since it's a concentration spell, I'm willing to say it's 30 feet uh, from casting time, but not necessarily afterwards. I will make the caveat that leaving line of sight is probably not the best idea like not not going to to uh, how to phrase this 30 feet from casting time you don't have to worry about line of sight if you get beyond that 30 feet you might have to worry about that a little bit it might the, the spell might not hold as thoroughly if that makes sense does that yeah. work yes, don't stray fine. too far right. when the spell's on yeah in a way that would like very logically break the effect the druid is it. <laughs> As we go down the gauntlet. I haven't touched gauntlet in years. <laughs> All right, so everybody get within 30. Hold hands and yeah. kubaya, casting spell. What are we doing now? All is now within 30. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. All right, everybody gets there plus 10. We're going to need it. Wow. Cool. It's a silent spell. I'm not sure I'm making noises productive. Hey, that that was uh that was Dahlia. She oh. makes that noise anytime someone casts a spell. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fun. No, I'm I'm kidding. Anyways. Uh as you pass by that hallway and can actually see into the room now, you can see that this is a uh uh, it's a fairly uh, it's a fairly large room. It's uh, at the very least like 30 feet in both directions uh, there. It's lined with these enormous uh, tables, these four 20 foot long, five foot wide, three foot high stone tables sort of standing in the middle of the room. Uh, and there are broken rocks everywhere because a Zorn is uh, digging through them, trying to find something to eat. Oh, it's not what I thought it was. What, what, what is, is it? it? A what? Uh, a a burn, uh, which is basically a three-legged rock monster from the pl elemental plane of Earth. Uh, oh. Allow me to show you what it looks like. I got it. Uh -huh. Ah, that's pleasant. I see. Mm -hmm. I thought it, it was a bullet. <laughs> Also uh, bad, why, but not why is everything from the elemental well, plane is just this is not <laughs> mouths. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what what you can see is that uh, it's it's grabbing rocks and uh, throwing them into the the maw on its on its head before spitting them back out, and it looks uh, dis despite its massive size, it seems desperate in its motions. Um, you can see every net like it, it, it'll shuffle over to a new pile of rocks and then uh, it'll uh, you guess sniff it as best you can tell from its uh, odd composition uh, and gra it'll grab one or two of the rocks and like gently lick them before tossing them in the maw and then spitting them back out. OK, what about this thing? Can we hunt this thing? Oh, Jean. <laughs> if we start a fight here 
The others will probably... We don't know how far they can hear or feel through Tremor Sense, so... Besides, if this one's hungry, that means a lot of them are hungry. And if we kill something, everything else is going to come over here eventually for a feeding. I think we need to be very careful about where we pick our battles here, just for just because of the ecosystem of this place. Yeah, let's treat this floor as a stealth mission. Try not to get caught. I mean, so, so that's the worst kind of mission. If you want well, to die, Jacques. Hmm. I assume that. that's something that is coming out of that thing's mouth. Yes, you hear a rum a deep rumbling voice speaking a language that it seems none of you understand. Uh, and it is uh it it is just desperately moving around this room trying to find something. What that's would surprising that be? Like a language that none of us or... know. I recognize No, I, I know I recognize the the script. It's like two, I know primordial, things. so it's not primordial. Primordial, huh? Okay. Well, anyway, it shares dwarven text. So all we've done yeah. so far Talk is run into very, you know, hungry or patrolling things, and not so much find anything useful for us. So let's keep looking, if possible. Um, no useful for you, perhaps. Just what would? Speaking. How would this be useful for you, for you, Jean? I'm curious now. I mean, it's a monster to hunt. Is that the most important thing here? I mean, we have a responsibility to hunt monsters. All the no, monsters here respond. To the bottom. I mean, All right, let's you may not... not, but we do. And he's he's noticeably pointing to himself when he says we. The monsters yeah, the respond. We. I see. The monsters also are subject to this. Do you think of that? Yeah. Just and, uh, to hunt them more than once. It, it's not actually creating a positive impact if we hunt these things, then. They will come back and reclaim their territory and continue to be a menace. I would think that the purpose of monster hunting would be to, you know, collect some resources or, you know, like, make an area safer, but we there is no resource we can conceivably get from this thing that will help us, and they'll just can come we back. Can do this in the hallway, please? Right, sorry. Yeah, additionally, right now, we have another mission. <laughs> I mean, there is also always the resource of experience. Chuck, can we not do this in the hallway? Yeah, that's all well and good, but right now we have a mission to get down to that one floor with the castle with the gate leading to the circle of hell that we need to get to. I appreciate that, yeah, experience would be good, too, to sharpen our skills, but I don't... Have you... I know it's been a while since we fought, but were you there for the last few times we fought? It wasn't good. <laughs> Ask Junk, can we please not do this in the hallway? So what's past this door? Uh, when you look down that hallway, you can see, well, that should be a 21. All right. So, because you have the pass without trace. Good. Yeah. Plus 10. So, don't worry, the, the, the Zorn has not noticed you. <laughs> pass without a trace uh, makes a rogue stealth disgusting. <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. Um... This thing, the this monster, by the way, is it, it was grumbling at first. It is now sort of like yelling furiously. It's its desperation see, has sort of dragged it towards y'all, but it still doesn't seem to be fully able to to identify whatever it is it's looking for. Uh, and then very briefly, you see it completely sink into the earth and it's just gone oh that doesn't sound good that doesn't look would good. it be like what what role would it be to like it dug into the floor 
uh, know it, about this thing. More like merged into the, into the floor. Yeah, it just it it, it is it, it isn't a, it it made the motions like it was digging, but the floor just sort of seemed to part like water around it and then reform. The 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 stone looks undisturbed. Mm. Uh, as far as uh, f- like learning about it, um, given that it's a much more magical creature, I'm going to say Arcana. Nice. Not a great roll, but well, actually, Arcana and Nature are the same for me. Mm. Uh, with a twelve and thirteen, what you basically know is that uh, it's. It's a creature from the elemental plane of Earth, uh, and its uh, its primary food is precious metals and gems. Mm. So it seems that it it's it what are there it smelled gemstones and precious metals in that room, but was unable to find any to satisfy its hunger. I see. So that means there's treasure hidden in that room somewhere. Let's ignore it for now. We're not because it's searching for something and can't find it, so let's not. Well, it smelled seems, it in there. Seems Jawa has disconnected. Ah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, he's back. Oh, am I back in the? Am I? Well, you're in the. You're not. It's not not in fantasy oh, grounds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ah, that's what it was. Yeah, but Bulets are cute. <laughs> I love bullets. I want a pet one. It is so cute. <laughs> um, I bet it's I can... less cute when it opens its mouth. It, you'd be correct. <laughs> um, so what you see to the south is uh, another much, much larger room. You can see that this door, uh, something big and heavy barged through it. Um, and also through the door on the other side. Uh, but this room, uh, this room is, uh, unlike the rest of the hallways lit. Um, there are four quartz pillars in this room that are filling the entire location with bright light. Um, and there are, uh, uh, as, as, as you might guess from the, uh, the, the beast that charged through or whatever, there is also, uh, piles of stone and rubble set everywhere. This seems to have been some sort of workshop from what you can tell. There are, you guess, tables um, uh, along the side walls and you vaguely, th- this seems to be a room that needed, obviously needed quite a bit of light um, based on how deep you are, perhaps something to do with gemstones. That would explain the Zorn at the very least. Hmm. This might be a room worth searching. All right, let's take a look in here. All right. Uh, As you take a look through, uh, you find uh, that there is a fairly old but still pristine due to, you know, proper craftsmanship. You find a set of jeweler's tools. Oh, hmm. Um, It seems in the chest. Yeah, it seems that. this room, yeah, was uh, a a gem cutter's workshop. Um, it seems that you the the section of the uh, section of this floor might have been uh, a a workshop and uh, a, a station for like the collection and processing and uh, or, you know the gathering, collection, processing, and uh, creation of precious gems. An understone gemstone quarry. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Just taking a look down this hallway to make sure there's not something just waiting down there. And Victor, with uh, with an eight, uh, it's not a very it's not a very big one. Uh, but you do find a very small sliver of emerald. Oh, hey. Okay. I'll go ahead and take that. Never know when you need bait. Mm-hmm. I mean, a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Usk, with an 11, uh, you find a fragment of emerald of a similar size. Lander, with a 15, uh, you find what might... <laughs> you, 
you find what might be uh uh at like a a sort of chipped fragment of maybe a ruby it's a little difficult to say uh jonk with a 21 uh you find a sort of uh i would say a a what's the appropriate size like a golf ball sized uh opal and uh yuli with a 20 um you realize that uh it's not something that was part of something that was being worked on in the workshop. Uh, but you spot that one of these rocks is in fact a geode and you crack it open to reveal this, uh, or you, and you're able to sort of crack it open to reveal this, uh, just glistening amethyst. It's, it seems like it's a, uh, a like all, all of you found a a decent gemstone, but Yuli, yours is the one that would definitely be able to be sold topside. All the others would, uh, the rest of you would have some difficulty because there, you know, there's imperfections or the size of it isn't very good. But uh, Yuli, that is a you found some very nice amethyst. So does the opal a fresh just uncut get amethyst add- to that? <laughs> mm-hmm. So does them those things get added as just the gemstone as the gemstones as they are to the inventories or yeah you can uh i'll i'll go ahead and toss those in real fast all right that's something add and yeah you might be you might be onto something about bait for these uh these rock Mm. monsters perfect Mm. This is this uh, is something wait. we can use. All right, I've added the opal to your shank. You said you added your sliver of emerald, right? Uh, yeah. right, Victor. Okay, I did. Right. Um, fragment of a ruby. I like gemstones. Yeah. I don't know a damn thing. So I will. I used to be. Used to be big into rocks. Rocks, bugs. Shut up! I used to be in a lot into a lot of things. (laughs) Uh, all right. I think that's uh, except for the amethyst, right? I gotta add. I mean, it's more interesting than my thing, which is just like you know literary storytelling structure theory so <laughs> hey oh. no that's i find that fascinating too i just didn't i just didn't realize how fascinating until i was older <laughs> Here, here's a question the gem cutters tools i mean is the opal that jean found is it is it in decent enough condition that those jeweler tools could fix it up into something that could be sold uh the fact that it was the the thing is you basically got what was tossed aside from a better gemstone like i'm certain there is someone who could make use of it but it's uh it's it's it is imperfect in the sense that a lot of jewelry is okay that makes Uh, sense cut it down even smaller put it into like a ring or something yeah amethyst geode this thing is a hefty like two pounds Wow. So, all right. Yeah, there's some there's some nice, neat little little gemstones you've picked up, which could potentially be useful. I will carry this forever. So do we go down the other broken door or do we go back and then keep going down that hallway? It looks like that hallway just looks back around around. the dining hall. So unless you want to send your owl up and there's not like a thing that goes up, which is possible. Yeah. Did those uh. Umber hulks, have they just been standing there the entire time, or did they did they leave by now? Uh, they've moved by now. All right. So I guess I'll have my owl check this area out. Okay. 
as you have your owl fly up there, you can see that, yes, the hallway does sort of loop back around. It's not a dining hall. Um, it is a uh, from from what you can see, there is a deposit of some sort. Uh, it seems that this was where um, rocks were sort of gemstones were separated from rocks and tossed into what you see is a very big open pit. Oh, it's a uh, so That's what that is. Yeah, it's 10 feet wide and based on what you can see, about 70 feet deep. Gross. Mm. It's uh, and the bottom is full of broken rocks, so <laughs> not good to fall in. How many floors deep of the undermountain do you think that is? I mean, it could be one for all we know. It could be one. It could be my, none. My, my leading question is, what was their plan when that pit filled up? Make a new pit. Make a new pit. Okay, but where do they put the rock they're taking out of the new pit? Good they question. It, if you would like, I can actually tell you. The dwarves disposed of rocks by casting them into pits. When a pit became full, it was covered using stone shape, and a new pit was created. <laughs> so they just made a new yep. pit. But that is a good question of where do they put the materials from the new pit? I mean, if you've got stone shape, it's the, the logistical piece of it is at least a little bit easier. Yeah. When, when, when pit fills up, use stone shape, make it whole, make it just a whole column of rock again. Open new pit next to where old pit was. See, this is where you make friends of the things in the world that eat rock and then just throw it to them yeah. as treats. Now, here's a question. With stone shape, if you use that to make a hole, does it make the rock around it denser or does it just push all the rocks outwards from that location by the amount of space that the hole is? Eventually, An excellent question. One that... <laughs> An excellent question, and one that elementalists have been discussing for quite some time. I think you're all overthinking this. <laughs> for some reason, it just worked it. for them. <laughs> Look, you take the pit, you fill it with rocks, you open a new pit, you check through those rocks, and you throw the old rocks back in the new pit. <laughs> well, it's all, all simple. Right. <laughs> I guess we're heading down this hallway now. Yep. All right. Which uh, looks like it might connect to that other hallway where the Umber Hulks went down. Yeah, but like every hallway contains that possibility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to be scared of our monsters wherever we're going, then what are we even doing down here? Jacques. Going further down. Called strate strategy. You should learn it. You don't have to fight things to get past them. As you walk down this hallway, uh, a bit of light catches your eyes. As you see on this angled wall, there is a fresco uh, depicting dwarves tossing gems into the mouth of a giant sorn. And the gemstones do not match the rock around them. They appear to be real. Although it seems... You can tell now that you're looking at it, there are holes where more used to be. <laughs> so, oh boy. I mean, we could. I mean, so, so does that mean we could, in fact, take the gems that are attached to this fresco? If, if you, you want, want them you out. can try to pry them off. <laughs> we could, or we could leave them for the Zorns that undoubtedly raised I mean, from we're this. We're already fresco. carrying bait now, so. I've got uh, <laughs> no worries. Uh, what you can see on the wall, uh, for for those of you with an eye for rocks, are uh, three banded agate, three banded agates, uh, two moss agates, uh, four car uh, carnelians, three citrines, and an amethyst. A lot of agates. I need to brush mm -hmm. up, apparently. Because that was if you all... want, I will. No, I, I will don't. go ahead. Actually, I don't. <laughs> no, no. OK, I was like, I can get my pictures of rocks. <laughs> uh, I, they are they are, I presume, gems of some value. So 
I will just take your word for it. <laughs> All righty. Um, okay. In that case, uh, yeah, there there's two hallways you can see from the sort of end of this. Uh, and they sort of branch out yet further. Allow me to do that. It, um, if Jean were to try and take one, would it take a lot of effort or would they come out comparatively easy? Uh, you could fairly easy, easily take a knife and just sort of pry them loose. You might even be able to do it with your claws, in all honesty. Okay, is there any indication that taking any of them causes anything bad to happen? From what you can tell, no. Just seems to be oh, a just seems to be yet another fresco. Let me check. I know you said five gems. I can't remember what the fourth one was. Uh, it was the banded agates, the moss agates, the carnelians, citrines. That's and what it was. Yes. Yes. Look at those fancy rocks. It's anyway, up. Hello. um. With an 18, you get the sense that this is another perfectly normal fresco. The dwarves just really like to do art. All right. As, as well they should. Well. I... Well, if nobody else is going to, going to try and take any of them, uh, Jonk's just going to claim Feel them for free, himself. Junk. Go for Go it. Go for it. Just... Uh... <laughs> Don't try to hold on to them if we're getting chased by a Zorn. All right. So are you taking all of them or what? <laughs> I mean, all, I mean, all that he can carry and that there's there is, that, are, that there is time to claim. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and add them to your to your character sheet then. While you're doing that, I'm just going to peek around this corner here. I'm just a guy with a bow. <sighs> <laughs> All right. I mean, you also have knives, right? Just go here. I don't. I don't have anything that's actually good against these rock beasts. Just shoot arrows well, at them. I've me. got something that's good against every beast. Yeah, great. Is that, is that a for request you. for something? No. I'm just saying that I'm useful. Good for you. That makes one of us. Well, at least two. Victor's also useful. Pass without trace. I don't know yeah. why I did that when I could have just grabbed them directly from the thing. <laughs> I feel dumb now. Uh, trees. I mean, we all have our we all have our moments. Yeah, I have to change the numbers very slightly. Give me a moment. I'm just going over the last few fights in my head, and we've kind of cut it real close, actually, kind of many times. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I don't remember the last time I took damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have added the precious gemmed stones to your inventory. Uh, what you can see down this hallway is uh, another room and it, what seems to be a section of the floor that was blocked off to be constructed later and it never seemed to happen. Whatever happened to this floor of the Undermountain seemed to have uh, prevented them from continuing. But you can see that there is a uh, another doorway down there and it leads to some form of room. And what your owl can see is uh, yet another hallway. This section feels a little cozier than you were expecting. Um, perhaps uh, this, you know, given the proximity to what was a work environment, perhaps this was a uh, some sort of accommodations, a break room or living quarters, perhaps. And John, try and listen at the door, see if there sounds like there's anything on the other side. Sure. You hear the sound of magic. Specifically, the sound of a gate, like one of the magical gates that you've encountered up to this point, closing. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like there may be a gateway in there. Let's Wait, take really? a look. Well, I heard I heard it sound like one was closing. All right, hurry on over then. 
Actually, let's have Usk stealth open the door. Sure, I guess. All right. Stealth it. <laughs> Yowza! Glad you are able to stealthily open this. Yes, you are able to stealthily open this stone door easily and take a look inside. And it looks like, luckily for you, whatever was using this gate was going the opposite direction. Hmm. So there's there's nothing in the room barring hmm. the gate set into the eastern wall. Yay. Hmm. Uh, it is the stone archway that you have uh, heard, uh, you've seen and, and passed through before. Um, and you can see that uh, the way it's carved... Uh, the keystone actually shows a rust monster. Hmm. But it's difficult to tell which floor this goes to offhand. So we found a, we found a shortcut, great. But we don't mm -hmm. know where. Okay. I presume only us can see this right now, right? No, I, there's no one else in here, so... I mean, until until other people go into the room, correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would what would I roll to see if Jean recognizes the rust monster monster? Uh, I believe rust monsters are considered uh, monstrosities and thus nature. But let me double check. Mm. Rust, mm. rust, rust. Yes, they are monstrosities. So go ahead and roll nature. Just well, not doing good with rolls right now. Unfortunately, well, okay, I did. Well, I did do pretty good on finding a gem. So. Yeah, uh, with an eight, what you know about rust monsters is uh, mostly horror stories of people being like, I would rather face down an army of orcs with both of my hands tied behind my back than deal with a rust monster. Um, and Lander with a 24, you know that the reason why is that uh, rust monsters are not uh, extremely aggressive. But... Uh, they consume metal like nobody's business, and it's uh, the their method of doing it is to uh, excrete a fluid that causes metals of a lot of different strengths, including up to like uh, uh, anything ferrous uh, can be completely rusted by a rust monster and dissolve basically right, which they yeah, then eat so. yep. equipment degradation so. lovely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a very bad matchup for yuli <laughs> yes there are uh, a lot they... of things that i know that are really bad at matchups that i don't want to meet any of them <laughs> yes so that they yeah. you know that they can eat uh iron steel adamantine and mithril okay so there's there's very there's very little they can consume that uh, or they, there's very little metal that they can't consume. Excuse me. Time to make armor out of bubble wrap. Frankly, the only good <laughs> matchup we've had is with enemies trapped at the other end of a narrow hallway. <laughs> to be fair, there aren't many things resistant to force damage. There is nothing. So. How would one so is the only way to figure out where the gateway goes is to actually go through it or is there it would be to to go through it or to find whoever went to the other side of it. Hmm. Or to see if anyone knows. Like you you would have to do some investigation like in town or something to so see here's if here's a thought. Oh, Identify. Yeah, well. Oh could I mean, would it be is can could the owl be sent through? Theoretically, like, if you could figure out how to open it. But I think the thing was after that first time we sent the owl through, it's now like we have to go through as well or else it's just. Anyway. Identify. You want to identify the door? Yeah. Take All eleven right. minutes. Okay. Just sit there with my hand on it. Seriously? Okay. The door is a jar. <laughs> Don't tell me the door is a jar. 
It's a door, not a jar. Do I look stupid to you? Is there, and, is there anything to be heard from the other doorway? Uh, no. It's also strangely quiet. By the way, you guys can go ahead and check out those other places while I'm sitting here. The way to the left was blocked? The, the leftmost path. There's still that door on the right on the leftmost path. Hold on, let me. This is blocked this... off. Okay, yeah. And the other side isn't. <laughs> remove this. No, remove this. Remove this. Remove it. All right, back in mask mode so I can reveal stuff. Um, yeah, why not? You're going to oh. go in there? Yeah. Sure. I probably right. won't learn where this thing goes to, but... You might learn the activation. Yeah. I feel like we've done this song and dance before, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Not this specifically. I've read the runes on a gate before, but I've never actually used identify on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dolly is going to go ahead and follow you, Yuli, just in case. <laughs> um, what you can see are more quartz pillars uh another another four that are illuminating this room but there is nothing inside it looks like there used to be furniture in here but it was completely stripped bare ages ago nothing but dust and the four pillars of quartz that are keeping things lit okay so that was a roll for mm. Junk to try and stealthily look through the other door. Uh, I mean, it's Are a you... solid stone door, so there's not really a looking through it unless you crack it open. Yeah, uh, I'll probably just open it normally. Okay. Yeah, I would guess so, a one would be kicking the door open. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, with a with a seven, it's it's making the noise that a stone door in a stone hallway would make when it opens. Well, technically uh, a seventeen. Yeah. All oh, right. Technically ah. a seventeen. Never so, mind then. Not not as bad. Um, yeah. At the very least, the other party members don't notice it. Uh, it is a den. You can see there are stone couches and tray holders occupying the uh, northeast and southwest corners. Uh, and there's like it, it seems to be a break room for the dwarves that were working on the, the various parts of this floor, either in the, the gem cutting area or perhaps one of the other zones. Dwarves take breaks? Occasionally. I, I, I can't help but ask, are there any chairs in the room? Uh, stone. <laughs> they're made of solid stone, so yes, but also no. Okay, well, that, that also answers the other question. <laughs> know what that other I'm, question is they're they're not carved into the floor they can be moved don't no, encourage that was, this <laughs> no that's not that's not what that's not what the other question was going to be <laughs> i'm i'm just letting you know like the stone furniture is not like carved out of the ground it's it was brought in at some point no but the thing is if they're carved of stone then they're probably not going to be very comfortable no not for you Perhaps for a dwarf, but not for you. They might be good for a monk who's like doing one of those trying to training to uh, uh, surpass their bodily senses and senses of discomfort. I mean, I got a nice blanket. Yeah. You could probably do do a little bit of good with that. Yeah. Set it on a chair, sit on the blanket. All right. With a 19, uh, you can see that uh, there are very few signs that anyone has gone through this room before. Um, there's evidence of dust everywhere. And you can see there's something under one of the couches. Uh, and it takes a bit of moving this stone couch, which is difficult, but fairly easy to get help. Exactly from the, the other search between the cushions in this instance. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you see that underneath one of the couches, there's a large iron key. 
Oh, we're certainly not leaving that behind. Yeah. All right. I will go ahead and add that to your inventory. Now Picking up all sorts of stuff today. Creature. I mean, when you, when you find when you find a mysterious key just lying around, it tends to be important. Yeah. Is Suddenly it also we're in a like... Zelda dungeon. Yeah. So it's down this way. Uh, down that way. You see, uh, it's another stone hallway, and it, you can sort of peek your head around, and it looks like uh, another zone with uh, a broken door that some something has barged through. But that stone looks recently broken. All right, so I'm going to keep my owl there for now. On and watch. you can hear what sounds like two beasts fighting. So it's going to keep my owl there on watch. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, all right. So you're going to the south door now? Well, listening first. You don't hear anything this time. <sighs> so do you open the door? Door. Do you want to open this door? Brave, brave, Sir Jonk. <laughs> I mean, Yuli's probably the worst at stealth. I am the worst at stealth. So. Door, open sesame. All right, so you are opening it? Yes. All right. You see another hallway, and you also see, out of the corner of your eye, sort of down it, and in this sort of uh, alcove, another gate. Like is it active, or is it closed? It's not active. Not yet, so, at least. But it's another magical gate like the one that's already being investigated. Correct. Speaking Sean, of, how far along tell, is that? Sean, uh, go tell Lander we found another one. I would say you've probably hit your your time for ritual casting. Here's what you know mm -hmm. about this gate. Um, okay, so we found another one. You have difficulty telling specifically where it would go to. Yeah. Um, you do feel like uh, you know, some of the other gateways have given you a, shall we say, negative vibe. Um, this one is not giving you quite as uh, uh, it's not sending any kind of shiver up your spine. It feels, uh, and it might just be because it's currently deactivated, um, but it doesn't feel as imposing as some of the others have been. However, you do know that the way to open it is to sacrifice something made of ferrous metal. Huh. You have to touch it to the gate, whereupon it will dissolve completely, uh, opening it for one minute. I see. So that's probably why it has the depictions of a rust monster. That seems to be the case. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Let's go check out that other one. This feels or should we leave like, that for next time? This feels like a... <sighs> if I said, like, this feels like a detour, does that make sense? This feels like kind of like a, a part of a secret passage of gates. Could be. From one to another to Possibly. another. Like, you've got the gate down here and then the gate up here, so someone could just, like, kind of come through. Not really here for anything of use, but, like, using it as kind of like a roundabout pathway of teleporters. It could also well, be like a pit stop. Yeah. <laughs> of note, as I, as I said, six does not, unlike the others where there's a direct pathway of some kind, six does not connect to five like that. So it's possible that these have been in use uh, as the only way to get to six until the Umber Hulks came in. Hmm. And someone was just here. Mm-hmm. What's further? Uh, so what's further down the hallway? Uh, further down the hallway is another turn, uh, leading down yet further. And uh, still, like a huge chunk of floor to go. <laughs> Oh, there's so much floor. There's yeah. so much floor. You've explored so, so very little of it. Yeah. 
um, there slowly but surely mm-hmm. but we're also like avoiding anything that moves mm-hmm. what's the uh what's this gate like uh this gate uh is uh it's it's slightly more stylized uh there are six shallow empty niches carved into it um mm. uh, carved into the archway and the uh the 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 there's no uh symbol on the keystone uh instead the wall behind the arch has a symbol carved into it, which seems to be a stylized image of a mountain with a sun above it. That sounds like either a religion or history check. Possibly, but it's a little difficult to tell. I'm going to roll both of those things. Uh, okay. Uh, with a fifth, uh, with an eight... You don't really have a clue. It seems to be some sort of stylized thing, but you're not really sure. Uh, As for the other. Apologies, I have to figure out the section that this comes from. I see. Uh, Ah, okay. But basically, I don't have any recollection of a historical event involving a mountain with a sun over it. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what you can tell, nothing seems to strike you, even with the uh, uh, even with the the fifteen. You just it doesn't seem religious. It just seems particular it it definitely is not it, it it's definitely designed with purpose you just have no idea what that purpose is it might not be a broad like historical or religious symbol it might be a symbol for <laughs> like, nature. a specific group or even with a 19 on nature nothing strikes you would okay. okay does does insight only apply to when you're interacting with people generally speaking yes but i'm also willing to hear cases you know you know me i'm generally pretty lenient in that regard well i mean if there's no indication of it of it interacting with any of those things maybe to see well i feel like i'm stretching but maybe insight to see if there's some angle we haven't considered or some other like what like what is what is this this what is what is what might be special about you know the position of the sun in this case so like we know it's not religious it's not some natural phenomenon i mean at the very least to maybe get an idea of what it relates to or what category it is supposed to be a to time of under. day mm. which would be difficult for to, for most people to tell in the undermountain yeah true possibly that said Every other gate has needed a key of some kind. Yeah, like I was thinking it's got those six notches. Okay, is, is there anything special about the key that Jean found that might relate to this gate? Uh, No, it just seems to be a regular iron key. You don't know to which section it goes to. I but... try sticking a fragment of gems, uh, one of the fragments of gemstones that we found uh, into one of the notches. Uh, it doesn't really seem to fit the That's the notches fair. don't the notches don't uh look carved to hold a gemstone. Um, you're not entirely sure. The, you're not entirely sure if it's a design choice or if it's a trap type choice mm. uh, or mechanical choice. I should say it mm. it seems it seems difficult to tell. The section of the hallway is a bit odd. Especially since no other gate you've encountered as of yet has had uh, all of them have had something carved into the keystone rather than into the wall behind it. Arcana. Uh, With a 17, you can tell that this is a very powerful gate and that's about it. So, yeah, my theory is not that this was not that this was this is like has a like a 
meaningful use for everyone to be able to use. I think this is like very specific to like a person or a group. And the symbol is has a has a specific meaning for them and not the general public. Like a religious symbol or historical symbol would. Mm-hmm. I would like to just roll a general intelligence to rack my brain seeing if I recall anything about this symbol. I mean, you can. <laughs> With a 13, this symbol is old enough and seems s- specific to this section of the Undermountain or to whatever dwarven culture lived here before that it doesn't strike you. It seems extremely, well, niche. I mean, suns over mountains are not a very specific, you know, like, unique cultural mm-hmm. symbol. I don't think we're going to get I don't think we're going to get this one well without like, I guess I'll sit here and investigate this one too. All right. I don't know that you'll have the time for that because yeah, results uh, will be revealed next time. Yeah, Maybe, w- unless you're about to say that there's something approaching us in combat. Uh, what I was going to say was, you know, having your owl connection, uh, you can tell that those Umber Hulks have uh, finished their brawl. Mm-hmm. One has one has claimed territory and the other is uh, hissing and skulking off. And it seems to be heading your way. Mm. Oh, hell. Mm-hmm. Be prepared. Yes. An Umber and- Hulk might be coming this way. All and- right. Yuli, what you can mm. see is down the hallway, it appears appears to be some sort of you two should get in here some sort of room that has the same sort of glowing pillars you've seen but two of them appear to be flickering um as though whatever force was it was whatever force was causing them to light is failing and they seem shattered perhaps uh and you are not sure what might be in this zone <laughs> Caught between a couple of rocks in a mysterious place. There's literally mm-hmm. only one way we can go because the other way is Umber Hulks and please don't have your owl come back to us. Well, they can't trace it except mm-hmm. through magical means. Pass that yeah, trace. That 1% chance that they do see it go the other way. Please. <laughs> I mean, owls are good at stealth. By the way, since my owl is now here, what's on that other side? Uh, what's on the other side? It's another hallway, but it appears to go to a much grander room of some kind. Hmm. We'll have to leave that for now, because it's about time to go. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it was a shorter session. Uh, but I mean, right uh, now, I'm thankful we had a session at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, then. Guess we need to do our... Do the spiel. Thank you for listening to our Spud Ventures. If you like what you heard, you can find more at youtube.com slash newbiespud or wherever you get your fine podcasts, iTunes, Google, Spotify, etc. We aim to live stream these games every Sunday around 2 p.m. Pacific time when possible at twitch.tv slash newbiespud. If you want to keep up with this and other projects I'm doing, you can follow me on Twitter at newbiespud. And if you want to see, support my ability to produce more content like this, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash newbiespud. See you next time with, I suppose, The Borrowers next week, right? Correct. Sure. Yeah. All right. Should be interesting. All right. Hopefully. All right. All right. Thanks for joining, y'all.